Okay, so I want to transition now um, into working leads. I want to give you some specific training on how to work leads, and then I'm going to finish with some mindset pieces. Okay, I'm going to finish with some mindset pieces in a second. Okay, so, so, so first, when we talk about working leads, when we talk about working leads, the, one of the first things you need to absolutely be doing is triple dialing. You will absolutely increase your answer rate when you call leads. Because what's the point of calling a lead if they don't answer? Right? What's the point of calling the leads if they don't answer? Uh, and, and you say, well, Cody, what is a triple dial? A triple dial is I call, they don't answer, I hang up. I call, they don't answer, I hang up. I call, they don't answer, I hang up. I don't leave a voicemail, but I'm calling three consecutive times. Three consecutive times, right? So you want to triple dial consistently, right? You want to triple dial consistent. When you triple dial, it increases the answer rate immediately, right? What's the point of calling leads if they don't answer? Okay, now also one of the amazing things that you can do to actually reach your leads also is to continue to actually use text to get a hold of people, right? Supposedly like 96, 97, 98% of text are read. And like 92% of texts are read within the first three minutes. Unbelievable. Okay, unbelievable. So text also works, right? Also, when you're leaving voicemails, when you leave voicemails, I want to give you some different variations of voicemails really quick. I'm going to go in about six minutes. I'm going to go 20 exactly. Let me give you a few different voicemail variations that you can use to leave voicemails right now. Okay, right now. One of the first ones, one of the first ones is good news. Betty, this is Cody. I got absolutely great news. Call me back as soon as you can, right? Because who loves, who loves listening to voicemails that are like 60 seconds, two minutes, three minutes long? Nobody. I don't either. And if you don't, guess what? Your prospects don't. Okay, so the first one's good news. The second one, the second one is a little more urgency, quick question, okay? Betty, it's Cody. Hey, I got one, one really quick question for you. Call me back as soon as you possibly can. Bam, right? Third voicemail, third voicemail is when I can't get someone's attention and I've called three times, triple dialed the first day. I've called three times, triple dialed the second day. And I've called three times, triple dialed the third day. Here's what I'm going to do on the third voicemail. Betty, it's Cody. Hey, no need to call me back. If we don't hear from you, we're gonna just drop it off. See you soon. Do you think that we'll get a call back? If they don't want you coming to their house, it probably will, okay? Because the point is to get attention, right? They're watching billboards and commercials and they're getting 42 calls and 72 pieces of mail and they got Facebook ads, everything else, right? It's a busy world nowadays. And your job when you're working a lead is to get their attention, okay? It's to get their attention. So I'm gonna give you five C's Five C's really quick, okay? Five C's on how you can work leads better. How you can work leads better. The first C, if you're taking notes today, I hope you are. The first C, as it, this, this audience keeps growing, man. I, I love the massive amount of attendees we have on the Zoom. Okay, this is unbelievable. Okay, great job, TSS. Okay, the first C, awesome job, Michael and, and Jeremy. First C, control. Control. The person in control wins. The person in control wins. I also love how we kicked off the Zoom with, hey, we're going to give away some stuff, man. Must be present to win. Isn't that true in life too, that you must be present to win? You got to show up. Whether you feel like it or not, you must be present to win. Okay, so the first C is to, is to be in control. And control doesn't mean I'm going to talk a bunch and puke on them and I'm going to give them 42 things to think about. Control means I'm asking questions, and, and most, people are, most people are confused. Most people think the person asking the questions, and let me know in chat what you think about this. Most people think the person asking the questions is in control. That's what we've been told. The person getting answers to their questions is the one that's actually in control, right? If I ask a question and I don't get an answer, I'm not in control because they're in control because they're not answering me, right? For example, when I, here's, here's a little trick. When you do not get an answer, I'm going to give you a little sales tip right now. When I ask my wife, hey, babe, where do you want to go to dinner? Guess what she says? I don't know, babe. You choose. I'm not sure, right? I immediately say, 
I use a hypothetical and I ask a follow-up question, right? If you had to choose, where would you say? And it always works. I, I, I remember being in Joplin, Missouri, running a life insurance appointment years and years ago. I was sitting across the living room from a guy and I said, sir, do you know where your life insurance policy is? And he said, what? I don't know. Like most people do. It's human nature to say that, by the way. He said, I don't know. I said something that made zero sense. It changed my life and I still use it today. And I said, if you knew where it was, where would it be? Which is hilarious because he just said, dude, I have no clue where it is. If you knew where it was, where would it be? And he thought about it for a second. He's like, well, if I knew where it was, it'd be in the filing cabinet right over there. I'm, I'm sitting across the living room from him. He's in the recliner. I'm on the couch and I'm like, sir, are you talking about this filing cabinet? Yes. Can I open it? Yes. Guess what was sitting on the top drawer of his filing cabinet? His policy that he just said 60 seconds before, I don't know where it is. People are telling you these things when you're making calls and it's human nature and they don't mean it and we don't even realize it. Okay, first C, control. Second C is coachable. You have to always be coachable, willing to learn, and willing to get better every day. Once your ego gets in the way, I promise you, it will put a lid or a ceiling on your personal growth. Third is confidence. You have to have a swag about you. Coach Bird talks a lot about a, about a personal swag. You could have some confidence about you that you are going to get what you want. I'm confident they're going to answer the phone. I'm confident they're going to love me. I'm confident in my ability to get it done. I'm confident in the product. I'm confident in the carrier. I'm pro you know what I mean, et cetera. You have to exude confidence. Why would you ever buy from someone that, 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 when they don't have any confidence, right? Number four, the fourth C for Cody is certainty. Certainty. Certainty is a whole nother level. Like I'm certain when I get on the phone with someone that if I do not help them, I am doing them a disservice. Because I'm certain that if they have insurance with me, I'm certain that if I'm their agent, I'm certain that if I'm in their life, that their, their experience and their life and their business will get better. I'm certain of that, right? That's a whole nother level of confidence. You got, all right, I'm kind of, con I'm confident. And then I'm certain, right? Let's take it to a level 10 and let's get certain, if you will. Okay, let's get certain if you will. Absolutely have to do that, okay? And the fifth one is consistency. You gotta show up and be consistent every single day whether you feel like it or not. A lot of times we're like, dude, I'm tired. I don't wanna get out of bed. Like I just got done doing a conference where I was up on stage about 30 times over like 72 out, 96 hours, right? And Jeremy reached out and he's like, hey dude, can you come and join us for this? I'm like, absolutely, why? Because I want to show up, man. I want to do everything I can to help every insurance agent in the world. And I know that you want to help every Medicare beneficiary you can. But if one day you don't feel like it and you don't show up, it will eliminate your ability to do so. Okay. Now I want to transition to three. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. I appreciate that. I'm going to transition to three A's for overcoming objections. Everyone is going to get objections. It's crazy. Someone literally fills out a form, they send it to you, they sign it, and they still say, I'm not interested. I'm busy. I'm broke. I already have it. I don't want to talk to you. I'm just shopping, right? Why? Because it's human nature. When I walk into Best Buy and, the, and they ask me, hey, what, 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 how can I help you? What do we say? Oh, I'm just looking. I'm just shopping. And then literally I'll walk like 30 feet away from him and I'll be like, now where are the TVs? He just asked him if I needed help. People naturally, naturally don't want help. People naturally are resistant to salespeople. Okay, people are naturally resistant to salespeople. I want to remind you that it's human. When they're saying I'm not interested, they're actually interested. Okay, when, when, when they're saying I'm broke, you have, an, you have a solution for that. When they're like, I'm in bad health, you have a solution. Right? When they're like, hey, I'm busy, I don't answer the phone when I'm busy. Think about that for a second. When you're busy, do you pick up the phone? No, and I don't either. Okay, so it's human nature. So stop listening to all these silly objections. Majority of what we're told early in a phone call is not true, okay? So remember that, okay? And those three A's I'm gonna add really quick 
Again, agree, answer, and ask. Because I may have, I, I get to talking fast and I get excited like everybody else. And I, I, I even forget to mention stuff I say I'm going to mention. Agree, answer, and ask. You need to be agreeable. You need to answer their objection and you got to finish with a question. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, TSS. Appreciate that. Okay, you got to agree. Most people are disagreeable when they're, I'm going to work back to objections because of the couple of questions we got. Thank you so much for that. Most people, when they're talking about objections, appreciate the extra time too. Most people are disagreeable. We're trained that when someone says I'm not interested, that it's okay to say, well, what do you mean you're not, you're, what do you mean you're not interested? You don't have enough information to be interested yet. What is that? It's disagreeable. It's combative and it's silly, right? So the first step, the first step is to always, always, always agree, right? I'm busy. I'm busy too. I don't have a lot of money. I can understand that. I don't have a lot of money either. I don't have any time. I have very little time. I got about 10 seconds. Is that cool? Right? I want to, I want to be so agreeable that I keep people on the phone. And the purpose of, of, of the ask is to take back control shift them mentally away from the objection they just got they just gave you and get an answer to your question to get an answer to your question just it's simple most people want to have 42 different objections and they want to think about all this different stuff and what if i get that objection i gotta say this and if i get that objection i gotta say this and if i get that objection i gotta say this right that's not true okay keep it simple the kiss method keep it simple stupid right just be agreeable okay you know what hey i, I already have a great plan i'm with you all my clients have great plans too. Because they change every year, I'm gonna take four minutes and look to make sure it's the perfect plan for all of 2021. Because I had one time a client, they spent $6,000 more than they had to because they didn't take those three or four minutes to spend with me. But they spent them and they're glad they did. So you'll give me three minutes, won't you? Agree, answer, and ask. Okay, agree, answer, and ask. Hey, if you love this and you're like, dude, I want a whole team of people doing this, Seven Secrets on Building a Scaling a Sales Team. It's right there, click on that, I'll see you there. Hey, almost every insurance agent I know struggles with objections, specifically what to do and how to improve your closing ability. So I'm gonna talk through several different things, okay? I always talk about uh, my specific,